This video is Access 2019, Module 1, Part 1. We're going to begin by creating a database in Microsoft Access. And this particular video will talk about creating a table in Datasheet View. So to begin the Access software, you can choose the button down here on your bottom toolbar. Or if there isn't a button there, if it's not locked in place, you can, or pinned to that toolbar, you can click the Start button and locate Access on your list of programs. It may be located in different places. There could be a folder for all of the Microsoft tools or some other folder that is created using Office supply, uh, software or something of that nature. So just locate your Access button and you can start the program. Once it is started, if you want to pin it down here to the toolbar, if you do a right click on it, you can pin it to your taskbar and then the next time you go to begin access it will be listed down here. We're going to start today by creating a brand new database so we're going to choose to uh, blank the blank database option. When we're working with creating a brand new database you do want to be careful that you pay attention to not only the name of it but also where you want to save it. So we are going to be saving this in a certain folder on my C drive so that I'll know where to find it later. So if you need to change the default of where this is going to save, you're going to click this browse envelope picture and you're going to come over here and choose the folders and drive where you're saving the information. So for example, I'm going to go into my C drive and I have a folder for my work and then I have an IUPUI folder so then have a videos folder within that drive. So this is where I'm going to put the information. So notice now it has fixed the location of where it's going to save that file. Then I can put in the name of it, which is going to be Lakewood. Once you have specified the name and you know where it is saving it, so you have the correct location, then you can click the Create button. Now just as a reference, if you do happen to have a touch monitor, in your textbook on page 110, they do discuss how you can transition access into touch mode so that you can work using your touch monitor. I will not be using a touch monitor in these videos, but you are welcome to do that on your own if you choose to. When we start an access database from scratch, the one thing that it does is it does begin a table for us and it begins it in a view called data sheet view. In the tables, we have two views that we're gonna look at today. One is a data sheet view and one is design view. So the data sheet view will look a lot like a spreadsheet on the screen. It will have columns for fields or pieces of information that we're going to store in our table. And it has rows for records um, or entities that we have. This particular table is going to be a visit table. So it has information about all of the various visits that have occurred at this doctor's office. So our first field that defaults in is the primary key of this field, of, excuse me, of this table, and it is currently named simply ID. But if we want that name to be something that's a little more meaningful, we can change the name by right clicking on the ID field, coming down here and choosing rename field, 
and we're going to call this visit ID. And then you want to hit enter to finish the naming of the field. This field, the visit ID, is our primary key. So you'll notice that the unique box is changed. That's telling Access that there cannot be two um, records with the same answer in this field. We also want to change the data type. Now right now the data type of this field defaults to auto number which simply means that Access is going to start out by um, numbering the first record as visit ID 1 and then we'll sequentially number them as you add more data. If you have auto number as the data type, you cannot type any information into this field. It will automatically be placed there for you. If we want to be able to type in our own data, we're going to change this from auto number to short text. That will allow us to type in our own values, either text or numbers. And so that completes the first field. So now we're beginning, ready to add additional fields into our database. So the first field we're going to add using this group up here in our ribbon, the add and delete group. The first one is a short text field, so we will pick the short text button. You're going to pick the button based on the type of field you are adding. So if we're adding short text, we will click that short text button, and then it's ready for us to give it a name. So the name of this field is patient ID. We will type that in, patient ID, and again hit enter. You'll notice that some of these field names, we're not using spaces. Spaces are actually allowed in Access, but in some of the other databases like SQL, Server, and things like that, uh, Microsoft SQL, SQL does not allow spaces. So if you think you may have to convert your database from Access into another one in the future, a larger database such as Microsoft SQL, you may choose to set your database up with no spaces to make that conversion easier. So even though Access does allow spaces in its field names, oftentimes you don't see them. On your homework and your exams, just make sure that you match the instructions exactly. So if they give you a field name with spaces in it, put the spaces in there. If they give you one without, make sure you don't include those. Alright, the next type of field we're going to add is a date field. So again, we come up to this add and delete group. We locate the field for that type of, uh, the button for that type of field, which is a date and time. And we click on that button. It allows us to add a field that we're going to name visit date. So anytime you type in the field name, visit date, Always make sure you hit enter when you finish typing so that you complete the adding of that field. The other way to add fields is using this, this drop down list. If you don't see the drop down list, you just click on click to add and it will give you the drop down. We click on the type of field it is. This one is going to be a short text, so we'll click short text and we'll give it a name of reason. And again, hit enter after you have typed in the name. The last field that we're going to add at this point is a yes or no field. 
This is going to be a checkbox field. It allows us to check the box if the answer is yes and leave the box blank if the answer is no. We're going to call this field walk in. And again, hit enter when we are finished. Now we do want to make sure that we save the objects that we are working with. When you save a table, you're not going to be focusing on saving the data. Data does not need to be saved this way. It will save the data as you enter it into the table. When we come up here and choose our Save button, and we're going to call this Visit, What we are saving is the structure of the table. How wide are the columns displaying the information on the datasheet view? What are the field names? What type of field they are? How long the field is? The data type, does it have to be unique? All of those settings are called the structure of the table and that is what we are saving. When we get ready to close an object, you want to make sure you're clicking the X on the Object tab, not the large X up here at the top. If you click the large X, you are closing the entire database. Your database eventually will consist of multiple objects. You typically will have more than one table. You may have queries, you may have forms, you may have reports, and when you close the database, all of that is together and is being closed. If you want to just close the object that you're working on, you need to close this bottom X next to the tab of the object. The database remains open and you're ready to start another object or work with a different object. Another thing I want to show you is should you accidentally click this uh, carrot over here on the ribbon, it will close your ribbon. So in order to get that back so that you can see the ribbon, click on one of the tabs and then come over here and pin it down again using the pin. You can also close this object pane temporarily if you need to have more room on the screen for viewing something. So you can hit the double arrow that closes it to the left. And if you want to reopen it, you just do the right double arrow and it reopens. So that is a couple of quick tips on navigating within Microsoft Access.